In this video, I show you how to read a CSV file from any S3 file system easily. Most of the time, this will be a file located on Amazon AWS, but nowadays, there are also 100% S3 compatible alternatives like Wasabi. Our example uses a file stored in an Amazon S3 bucket. This example refers to reading without bulk load utilities, which means no TPT or fast load. It is therefore intended for smaller amounts of data. First I will show you how easy it is to read any CSV file. In our example we read a file that contains 3 columns and about 9 million rows. We are reading only the first 100 rows for performance reasons, since our S3 bucket is hosted in North America, but I am in Europe. Of course, it always makes sense to be as close as possible to the S3 hoster, but this is just a test, so performance is not important. Later in the video I will show you how to store frequently used external data from S3 on the Teradata file system to increase performance enormously. At this point we run the query and speed up the video a bit until the result is there. The result set contains beside our three data columns also the column location, which indicates from which file the rows were loaded. We are also interested in the data type of the data columns. So we use the type function on all three columns to see how Teradata interprets them. Again, we select only the first 100 rows for performance reasons. As you can see, Teradata has declared a suitable data type for each data column, which is derived from the content of the individual columns. Of course we are free to cast these data types to other data types as I show here. And, of course, you can use an external S3 table in your SQL queries, including joins, subqueries, etc. But note that the performance will be much worse compared to a pure query on Teradata tables, and the CPU usage and IOs will be much higher, especially with large external S3 tables. So you don't have to remember the path to your S3 file, you can simply define a foreign table as shown here and then access it like a conventional Teradata table. Even though querying across Teradata and S3 files in this way is convenient, I would recommend accessing external tables mainly for cold data. We at DWH Pro recommend that if you need the content of an external table frequently, you simply copy it from the external table to a Teradata table at the beginning of your batch load, for example, and then use that. This way you can customize the data types in one step and also provide this Teradata table with e.g. indexes and statistics that are needed. And of course choose a usable primary index. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave us a like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive regular updates about our latest videos. If you have any questions about the content of this video or anything else you want to tell us, leave us a comment below. I also recommend you visit our website www.dwhpro.com where you can study countless articles about Teradata for free. See you soon.